attending and a thriving Sunday school department. And we were at a place in our old facility where we were out of space and parking was extremely inadequate. And so at that point we decided as a group with a 99% vote in favor of to sell our small building and purchase a larger facility that we thought was to be an easy transition. The real estate market, however, just almost at that exact time, especially in the United States, was hit severely. And if you follow that, you know that thousands of people in the United States, some in Canada, lost their homes and their jobs and companies collapsed. And anybody that was paying any attention at all know that it was a, uh, a very trying, difficult time for a lot of people. Canada did not suffer near as severely as the United States, but Canadian markets did feel the effect, the ripple effect of the whole thing. And as a church, we were attempting to secure a low interest rate by dealing with several of the major banks. Even though we had a wholesome deal to present to the banks, nobody seemed interested in holding a mortgage on our behalf at that time. After several attempts to secure financing, we decided to let the deal go and wait a while. And in retrospect, we're now very thankful that we did wait. It was actually a, a good thing. In the meantime, we decided to rent facilities and continue to pray and look for a building and or a property that would prove to facilitate our church. Um, and we've been renting this facility, a very nice facility here, uh, Cataraqua Woods Elementary School, for three years. Spiritually, as a congregation, I think there's absolutely no debate, as a congregation we have grown in many ways. We are not the church we used to be. Thank God for that. Yes, amen. The faith, the love, the power, and the prayer, and the dedication of this church is running at a depth level many times beyond what it used to be. Mm -hmm. Several members from this church have shared their spiritual growth experience with me and I'm sure with others. It is fabulous what God is doing within this church. Yes. We are now at a point where we feel like we are ready once again to get serious and to pursue a permanent location, a permanent property. Almost everybody, everybody that I talk to are feeling that way. Even though there are challenges and huge financial commitments involved with owning a property, the joys and freedoms and flexibility to operate various ministries, however, becomes a reality when you're operating your own facility. The freedom to hold prayer meetings and special services and youth events and Sunday school programs, along with the perception of stability by the community, are all contributing factors and benefits of property ownership. That's right. Also, not only that, but we are building and giving for the future. That's right. Some of us will someday have children and grandchildren who may receive more benefit from our sacrifice than we ever will. Thirdly, lending institutions will want to see regular financial commitment to a building fund yes. accumulating in a bank account for at least a year before they will consider loaning money. Yes. Now, we do have a substantial amount of money right now set aside, and that's very good, but it's, it's not quite enough, and we have not been consistent enough. 
up to this point with a building fund. So how are we going to do this? First, what we're doing is we are asking every member of New Life Church to make this a serious matter of prayer. And we have been praying about this almost every time we get together for prayer. We are asking you to ask God to help us as a congregation make the right decision. We do not want to make a bad decision. We don't want to get in some kind of a mess. We're doing very well right now. Um, we're paying the rent and we're doing very well. But we do not want to get into a mess. Secondly, and that's what we're here to do today, is we are asking every member, everybody that attends this church to make a pledge. Actually, the pledge is twofold. We're looking and we're asking for a one-time sacrificial offering to be paid within the next 12 months. That will go right into the building fund, a one-time sacrificial offering. This one-time offering is sacrificial. If you are a student, you may have faith this year to pledge like a Maybe $200 or maybe $500 or $1,000. Career people, you may be able to stretch your faith and, and do a one-time $1,000 or $2,000, $5,000 or $10,000 or more. You may do something different to meet your pledge. You may have to, like you may have to work a little overtime or donate your income tax refund or have a yard sale or sell a car or a bike or furniture or something else. For your one-time pledge. Now the monthly building fund pledge is starting on July the 1st, 2012. The amount of this pledge is up to you. Two weeks ago, we passed out a mock pledge form and asked everybody that was in that service, we asked everybody to fill out what you can, what you can by faith pledge to the building fund for this year. Um, plus a monthly building fund pledge. What can, what can we do? And in that group that night, which was about two weeks ago, we had about $30,000 pledged. That's what, and a lot of people were saying, I, I'll give a one-time $2,000 uh, sacrifice offering, plus I'll give $50 or $60 or $100 a month to the building fund. That all accumulated up to about $30,000 within the next 12-month period. Now, that again was just a precursor, that wasn't official, but today is going to be official. There are a number of other people that belong to our congregation that are not here today. Uh, those people are very, very willing to give, a, their, we're going to have this uh, displayed on YouTube, they're going to be able to watch this in video form later on. Uh, the people that are not here are very strong, very faithful financial givers, and we appreciate that. So don't think because they're not here today that they're not going to pledge. Some of you were not here in the last meeting, so we'll make sure that they get a card and pledge, and they already know what's going on anyway. Now, the what we're asking here today is that everybody who belongs to New Life Church to do something. Everybody can do something. Whether you're a student, or whether you're single, or whether you're married, whether you're retired, um, the building fund pledges, remember this, building fund is beyond, over and above your tithe, your offering, your missions, your general offerings, this is over and above that. We are not asking anybody to break your bank, or to go hungry, or to take your your food bill, and say your, your, your food allotment, you know, your grocery allotment. And if you, if you spend $500 a month on food and, and you know, you say, well, I'm going to cut that down to $50 a month on food and give $450 to building fund, that's, we're not asking that. That's out to lunch. No fun <laughs> that's kind of crazy. You wouldn't have enough uh, money to buy your groceries. So we're not asking that, all right? Um, this is not something that we do a lot here at New Life Church. We don't do this every Sunday. We do this like once a year. Last time we did this was about two or three years ago. Three years ago, I think, was the last time we did this. So we're not here to try to rip everybody off, try to steal all your money, try to take all your fun away, you know, and try to get you to sell your camper and sell your Porsche and things. We don't want you to have to sell your, your Porsche or your, you know, your BMWs or your Mercedes-Benzes. I'm just being a little bit funny. But, um, 
But sometimes, if you if you do have a pledge, you you might have some stuff or you want to do a yard sale or sell something mm -hmm. to come good for your pledge. We are moving into the next phase of our church. I, I don't know when we're we're going to be buying something. Something could come on the market tomorrow. An existing building that's a great price within our range and we could go after it tomorrow. It would be nice. Um, I'm just saying by next summer, uh, we we hopefully would have a much better down payment by then with pledges that uh, we're looking at here today and ongoing. But what we're going to do is, at the end of every month, we're going to have a thermometer up on the wall. So by the end of, this is starting in July. So by the end of July, we're going to show you a thermometer. This is now what we have in building funds. So if it says $1,000, you'll see it $1,000. The end of August, maybe it'll go up to $1,500, maybe it'll go up $1,500, $2,500. By the end of September, maybe we're hitting 5,000. By the end of October, it might be 19,000. And so you're going to see the thermometer going up month by month. Everybody can do something. Look over at your neighbor and say everybody. Everybody. All right? And that's all we're asking you to do is to do what you can do. Um, it's important that you understand this is not to cut into tithe offerings, missions, what you're already doing, your, your general fund and stuff like that. Um, you know, we're all, we are paying rent here, a uh, substantial amount of money every month for rent here. Um, that is to be taken into consideration, I'm sure it would be, by a lending institution. What are you paying now? What have you had coming in the last month over and above what you're already paying? So, for instance, if we're paying $1,500 a month here, and there's another $1,500 a month coming in on a monthly basis, then a lot of lending institutions will say, well, it looks like you're good for about $3,000 a month over the past year. Anyway, that's what you've been good for. So sometimes they will look at that, all right? If you have $50 a month coming in, they're, they're going to look at that and say, well, you're good for about $50 a month, about $15.50. Um, so they need to see a consistent giving and a consistent increase over the months to know that you're to know that you're viable and to know that you're not just some kind of a flash in the pan, you're some kind of a fly-by-night church. We sold our church because we outgrew the building. That's why we sold it. We had no place to park. We didn't sell it because we had to. We were in, in a huge growing, growing growth spurt at that time. Our Sunday school was thriving. Uh, we want to see that happen again. God is going to help us see that happen again. I really believe that. Yes. All of our Sunday school rooms were, were packed. You can ask any of the teachers, Barb, my wife, Bob, Joe, uh, Bob and Rachel were teaching at that time. Uh, uh, Jonathan was teaching. Jonathan, your classroom was jammed. We had no more room. We were completely out of room. Um, I can see our church with some effort. The way that the Lord is moving in our church, I can see us once again. Uh, hit some really fabulous, fabulous growth and revival. There have been a lot of people baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost even in the last few months, and we thank God for every one of them. Yes. Here's a list of people who can do something this year. If I missed your name, I'm sorry, I didn't miss your name on purpose. I didn't list any of the kids, but here's a list of people. This is going to go real fast. There's Ed, Kyle, Mariah, Jill, Lindsay, Sylvia, Ashley, Joe, Matthew, Doris, Marge, Doug, Susan, Sharon, uh, Jean, Brian, Katie, John, Mark, Sonia, Corey, Cliff, Blanche, Dave, Nathaniel, um, Rolly, Winnie, Kevin, Geneva, Al, Alicia, Edith, Kathleen, Emily, Stacy, Marilyn, uh, Randy, Lisa, Sarah, Joe, Jesse, Barb, Ben. I used all first names. We have about 45 adults or teens that are listed there. And again, no children listed. So uh, Dave, if you want to get some help to uh, get those passed out, we're going to ask you to fill that out uh, now. And um, we'll give you about five minutes and then hand it back in. And that'll give us an idea of where we're at. Thank you, everybody, today for your sacrificial giving. While you're filling that out, I don't know if you've ever heard the story of the bricklayer. <laughs>